Hello, you beautiful people. Welcome to Thomas's Tower Readings with myself, Thomas Janlack. Please like, subscribe and share what we do here. We are looking at the planets in retrograde in August 2023 and how that affects um, us all or specific signs. So, are you ready? Five planets will be in retrograde by the time the month is uh, the month of August is done. Um, a lot of them are already in retrograde um, and we will talk about which signs are the most affected and what planet is affected or what planet is in retrograde and what that actually means. Ultimately, the um, most affected sign of all this month is going to be the sign of Virgo. Um, partly because Mercury goes retrograde and uh, Virgo is governed by, 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 by Mercury, but also Mercury is going retrograde on August the 23rd, which is the first day of the sign of Virgo. I will explain this a bit more in depth. Um, so let me just ex again tell you again which, which of the signs are the most affected. Now, when Mercury goes retrograde, everybody is affected. Mercury is just a prick <laughs> when he's in retrograde. Uh, or it's in retrograde because Mercury is gender neutral. Here's how this works. Mercury can only ever be in your sign, in your star sign, your zodiac, or in an adjacent sign. It's the closest planet to the sun. Therefore, it takes only three months to orbit the sun. Uh, it is faster than our energy can keep up, which is why when, when, when Mercury goes retrograde, we have problems communicating. So there is a, that has to do with location uh, or, or proximity to the sun, why Mercury affects us all so much. Mercury goes retrograde on August the 23rd uh, to September the 14th. Now Mercury does that crap th between three and five times a year, depending on the year. So Mercury is in retrograde rather a lot. Uh, like I said, retrogradation is a very naturally occurring phenomenon. So us being a part of the universe, we are well, very, well, very well uh, um, capable of dealing with retrograde planets, but it always makes sense <coughs> to know how to prepare for it. So, the, the signs the most affected, apart from everybody being affected by Mercury, <laughs> is Gemini and Virgo, because you are governed by Mercury, Scorpio, because you are governed by Pluto, Pisces, because you're governed by Neptune, and Aquarius, because you're governed by Uranus. And let's look at this. The reason why Virgo is so affected is because um, two planets go retrograde on August 23rd. These planets being Mercury and Uranus. They both go retrograde on August 23rd. Now, August 23rd is the first day of the sign of Virgo. So this is when we're actually moving into the energy of Virgo. The issue is that um, because it's the first day of Virgo's energy, um, it is <coughs> sorry, there's cusp energy, which means there's still some energy of Leo present. And it it takes a new sign, which then what would, would, would Virgo would be, 23rd we're going into the sign of Virgo for, for about a month. Um, but it can take up to seven days for any sign that we're moving into, in this case it's, got, it's Virgo, to really fully establish itself with regards to strengths. So as we're moving into a new sign every month, there is an energy of about seven days um, where uh, some people are quite affected, most notably the sign that is uh at the moment there, which is Virgo. So Virgo will be the one that is the most affected, but it doesn't mean that you are affected super negative. So let's just go quickly to the dates again and through the planets and what signs are affected. Like I said, Mercury affects everybody. It makes a difference if Mercury is in your own zodiac, your own sign, or in an adjacent one. one. By default, if Mercury is in your own sign, Mercury uh, um, um, gives you more strength with regards to communication and at the same time, every time Mercury is retrograde, we all have problems communicating well. We're also all asked every time Mercury is in retrograde, which is quite a lot, up to four or five times a year, depending on the year. 
is to read contracts, anything written, very, very carefully, right? And because Mercury and Uranus go into retrograde on August 23rd, that is what affects all signs the most, because there's two of them on the same day. Now, as I mentioned, it is the first day of Virgo, so Virgo is even more affected than any other sign. Now, why are we affected by Mercury and Uranus when Mercury is literally the first planet that we count, right, closer to the Sun, and Uranus is one of the outer planets? Well, that's because they share an energy together that is, that is important to talk about. So, Mercury is associated with communication. The number of communication is five. It also is the number of change. And obviously what is, what is changing is every time Mercury goes into retrograde, we can't bloody talk. We have problems understanding. We even have problems listening. Depending on who you are, how deep you are, how connected you are to yourself, how connected you are to the astronomy and the astrology inside yourself, that all will determine, will determine how much you, um, you are affected by Mercury's antics. And I call them that because they bloody are. <laughs> right? So... Uranus, on the other hand side, is the planet of sudden and unexpected change. Five being the number of change. Five also being the number of communication. Therefore, Mercury being retrograde and Uranus being retrograde on the very same day, even though they will be retrograde for in, in all uh, different times, for, for, for different lengths. Um, what affects us all the most is change. Here's the advice. Because they both go into retrograde on August the 23rd, Anything that you know ought to be changed. Any changes that have to be made. Any changes that you endeavor to get done. Get them bloody done before August 23rd. Because afterwards, it's going to be that much harder to bring about change um, without these changes being difficult. Right? So that's how this works. And now let's go through it. Uh, Gemini and Virgo, you are the most affected by, by Mercury's retrograde. I already explained Mercury. The reason why this is is because um, of communication. So Gemini and Virgo have to watch how you communicate the most. And also, because everybody's affected, because you are governed by Mercury, you will notice that Gemini and Virgo, by default, you cannot brush it off easily when people talk down on you. Because communication is the energy of your governing planet. And you will notice the moment someone is um, very negative towards you, makes you feel you're less, you, have, you will always have difficulties um, having a thick skin around that. Okay? So you are the most affected by, by, by Mercury's antics, if that makes sense, right? Um, Jupiter is in retrograde already, stays there until November 23rd, but has only co uh, recently come into being in retrograde, which was on July the 28th. Now, Jupiter is about two and a half times the size of all the other planets combined, apart from the Sun, you know? So, it's a massive planet. And of course, when a massive planet uh, uh, moves differently, which it doesn't, it just looks that way, um, you know, is different, um, affects us differently, of course we are all connected. And, and, and therefore affected by, by the retrogradation of Jupiter. Now, the interesting thing is that when you look at the planets, um, I don't care if Pluto has been removed. Um, you know, this is just, you know, Pluto is going to be removed. I guarantee you, you go 100 years down the line, Pluto is, is back inserted. It doesn't really matter if he's a dwarf planet or not, right? Um, he has been removed because he can't clear debris in his orbit, right? Um, that's why he's now uh, classified as a dwarf planet. Now, from that point of view, it is not important um, to us beings whether or not Pluto is, is not, no longer counted. But when it comes to astrology, we always look at the nine planets. So when you then look at the nine planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, obviously we're not looking at Earth when it comes to astrology because we're looking at what the stars. But since we are on Earth and we are shepherds of the earth, um, you have to count that planet when you look at energy. So there's nine planets that we actually um, look at. 
which are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. Including Earth means that of the nine planets, Jupiter, the one in the middle, has four planets either side. So Jupiter is the, planets, the planet that, when it comes to um, energy, attempts to bring balance to the universe. And Jupiter is bloody awesome because Jupiter, it is believed that Jupiter is the first or was the first planet to ever form. So Jupiter is amazing, right? Um, and what Jupiter does, he is known as the happy-go-lucky planet. Jupiter's only job is to bring lightheartedness and joy to proceedings. Now that he is in retrograde, and he has gone retrograde on July the 28th, 2023, will stay retrograde until November 23rd. It just means that we will be less lighthearted, things will be less funny, we might, we might not respond as lighthearted as we could during Jupiter's retrograde. But Jupiter has no negative traits. It is just a happy-go-lucky guy that brings joy to you. And all that is, um, you know, uh, his energy makes him a bit less funny. Right? That's like, like having a comedian uh, um, that has a month where he can go like, oh, I don't like my jokes this month. Right? <laughs> you know, a lot of people will still enjoy the jokes. He might not tell them that, that bad, uh, that well. See what I mean? So Jupiter is not super bad at all, if that makes sense. Um, but it's a retrograde, so it is worth mentioning. As already mentioned, the next planet is then down the line is Uranus, which is, um, oh, as I said, going on into retrograde on August 23rd. I already mentioned that uh, the changes that are coming affect all of us because Mercury and Uranus go retrograde on the same day. Now the planet that is affected the most by whatever Uranus does is Aquarius because Aquarius, uh, Aquarians are governed by Uranus. But that also means that Aquarius as a sign always has to deal with change because that's what the governing planet gives them. And the issue that Aquarians always have had is that you have aqua, water, in your own name, but you are an air sign. So you are the, the, the sign of the water bearer, the sign of the giver. Um, and yet water is not your element. So Aquarius oftentimes struggles by giving and giving and giving and yet not being appreciated as much. And that needs to change. But change is difficult to deal with for Aquarians at the best of times. So I make this sound horrendous, it's not meant that way, but there are some Aquarians who religiously feel totally wiped out. If there are changes that are already difficult for you to stomach, they will be much harder after um, after August the 23rd and all you can do is to take a, take a deep breath, uh, watch your, your, your breath work, go on meditation and understand that you're awesome. It all starts with you understanding, I understand, I'm governed by a planet like any other sign, but I am me and I am strong. Uranus uh, um, is just the energy that governs your planet, therefore you know you are affected by it quite a bit. But Aquarius' strength has always been that it's because you're so giving, you have been in contact with a lot of other energies. And therefore, you're quite good at reading people. You're quite good at removing yourself. So you have learned a couple of tricks not to be affected so much. So it, that's important. The other thing is, that when we're, so the, the, the other planets that are in retrograde, which are Uranus, um, Neptune and Pluto, are all outer planets, right? So, which means they're, 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 they're far away from the sun. Um, they're, they're normally bloody cold. The point is, outer planets, by default, are, it isn't quite, doesn't quite work that way, 100%, but they're not inner planets. The inner planets are basically anything up to Saturn. <laughs> And they talk about individual individual energies and how you deal with stuff individually. Now the outer planets are, more, are, are, are to a certain extent about more general themes, which means stuff that everybody is going through um, oftentimes at the same time 
at the same pace, right? So again, Uranus is in retrograde or going retrograde uh, on August the 23rd and um, it brings about a change. Now, as mentioned, Uranus is known as the planet of sudden and unexpected change. That's why we're doing the, the, the retrograde reading. Now that you are aware, it's not going to be as sudden, is it? Right? <laughs> Again, the advice stands, any changes that need to be made, try to make them before the 23rd and understand that after the 23rd, don't allow yourself to be super stressed by changes, right? Changes are quite a natural phenomenon and you will get through it. So next planet on, on the list of retrograde is Neptune. Neptune has already retrograde, um, has gone retrograde on June the 25th, will stay retrograde until November the 28th. So we are already in the energy of Neptune being in retrograde. Neptune is the planet that um, governs Pisces. Pisces is the 12th sign, the last sign of the wheel, the sign of um, the dreamer. Um, and Neptune's job is to bring spirituality, spiritual awareness, spiritual understanding to one's life, not just the life of Pisces. And in retrograde, you will just find, or, or a lot of you will, will, will find that you're maybe having some issues embracing your spirituality. Uh, maybe you're, 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 you're quite good at normally doing um, candle, candle uh, spells or drumming under the sun, you know, under the moon, that kind of stuff. And you will probably, you know, have noticed that you're slowing down a little and you probably think that's because, you know, it's summer and I do other stuff. No, it is because Neptune has gone retrograde. So the energy of giving you, renewing your sense of, you know, you are a spiritual being in a, in a physical uh, in a physical body, if that makes sense, right? So your essence is a little bit lost or at least um, diminished. It's not lost, but, you know, when, when Neptune goes retrograde, um, everybody, uh, for the most part, feels a little less connected to your own spirituality, especially to your inner voice. Again... Uh, the, 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 the sign most affected by Neptune's uh, retrogradation is Pisces, right? So, and then, um, like I said, uh, I think that's about it. The, the only thing I should probably mention is that Pluto um, is retrograde and it affects Scorpio. The reason why I'm reluctant to use Pluto is because Pluto has never been, at the best of times, a normal planet. So... Apart from Pluto, each planet spends a specific amount of time in each sign. But Pluto has an erratic orbit. So on the ecliptic, it goes all over the place. Sometimes it goes really way out. Sometimes it goes uh, doesn't go out. And because of the um, erratic orbit that Pluto has, it takes 248 years for Pluto to actually orbit the sun. right? Because it doesn't go in a straight line. And the um, okay, if you gave Pluto a body, <laughs> um, the tendency is to see it as though when he finally orbits the sun, uh, or, or actually is at the point of, of you know, finishing his 240 year stand, stand <laughs> um, he will approach Earth lying on his belly, right? So uh, Pluto is not ever a planet that um, has made things easier. And and of course it governs Scorpio. Uh, and, I, and I say of course, because Scorpio is depicted by the animal with the strongest fight or flight response, which is the scorpion. So of course the, 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 the constellation that has that energy is given the planet with that energy so they can um, support each other. So that's how this all works. There's a reason why Pluto is the uh, governing planet of Scorpio. Now, now remember, Scorpions, the other planet that governs you is Mars. And Mars is, is aware of your energy levels. And Mars is not retrograde. So while you are uh, affected by, by Pluto's uh, uh, retrogradation, which means being weird, <laughs> now makes you more weird and, and not quite sure where to go, is now even harder, right, uh, with Pluto being in retrograde. 
But Mars is saying to you, like, you know, you watch your energy. It is, it is understanding what drains you that you then have to be fiery about, which is Mars's energy. And you still have that power to get yourself out and say, no, 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 no. I watch my energy levels. I'm good. Right. And you can still do stuff to keep your energy high as you're going through the changes that re that retrograde actually brings. Right. So, guys, I hope that helped. We can't talk. Helped. I hope that helped. Um, like I said, by the end of the month, there will be five planets in in retrograde. Um, and that was your um, retrograde video or reading for the month of August 2023. I want you all to send extra energy to the sign of Virgo because you will be the most affected uh, of all signs um, with uh, Mercury and Uranus um, being in retrograde. Now, Virgos. Mercury goes straight on September the 14th. So it's not, it's going to be, it's a fortnight, literally, right? Over three weeks. So it's, it's about three weeks that you will be, uh, that you will be affected by the, by these two planets uh, uh, hitting you like a brick, right? Like a ton of bricks. So I want all, all of you out there to um, whatever you do, whatever rituals you do, please include the energy of the sign of Virgo in your daily routines and in your uh, extracurriculum things. So if you do, uh, uh, you know, um, a circle or whatever, uh, s uh, starting on, on, on the 23rd of August, um, when we're in Virgo, um, please make sure to send them strengths. You can send them strengths already because, you know, um, why not? That makes sense. I'm not asking you to wait until the 23rd. What I'm saying is it will be much harder for Virgo after the 23rd. So send them what you got. But, but I'm conscious about it. So if you are a person that sends um, healing to the planet in Reiki, distance healing or whatever you do, right? Include Virgo. That's all I'm asking, right? Guys, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, don't be shy. Please like, subscribe and share. Please share. <laughs> and also, I'm quite surprised that hardly anyone ever leaves a comment. So I don't know um, why that is. I would like to hear from you. You know, tell me if you uh, liked the retrograde uh, video and if you think I should probably do one every month the first time I'm recording a retrograde um, video because I was just drawn to, to it given especially because two planets are going retrograde on the same day right so that was my, my the thought behind it but if you are interested in these readings please comment how the heck am I supposed to know right and don't give me a crap you're psychic right you should know I'm asking you you're watching these videos, right? I'm recording these videos for you. Um, so please let me know if, if the content you're seeing is actually appreciated by you or not, right? Okie doke. Okie dokie. And one more thing before I let you go. If you like my work, you can buy me a coffee. Yay. You can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. That's buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. That's all we got. That was the first ever retrograde video on this very channel if you want me to do this monthly please let me know and it might then be a regular or become a regular feature right thank you so much guys bye, -bye.